Hi friends, welcome back to my new lecture. Today we are going to see working of hydroelectric power plant. In this particular video, we are going to discuss about its construction, working, advantages, disadvantages and site selection for hydroelectric power plant. Basically, power plants are used for generation of electricity. So, main objective of this total arrangement is to generate an electricity. Whereas the name of this particular plant is a hydroelectric. This has formed by two word. One first word is called as hydro and another word is called as electric. Okay. So hydro word taken from an hydraulic whereas electric word taken from an electric energy. So in this particular power plant, the hydraulic energy is converted into electrical energy. What's meant by hydraulic energy? Hydraulic energy is energy which is stored in the water or energy present in the water is called as hydraulic energy. Whereas electrical energy is a flow of electron. So here we are going to convert a hydraulic energy into electrical energy by using this particular arrangement. So basically there are two, three major important parts in this particular power plant. So first part is a dam. This is important part dam. This is another part that's what called as a turbine house and third part is pen stroke. These are three important part of hydraulic power. What is a dam? Dam is required to store a water at higher height. So this dam will be at high height whereas a turbine house will be at lower height. If you see actual example of height of dam from the turbine it may be in a kilometers like a one kilometer etc. And this dam is built at higher height and stores the water. Where a turbine house is on lower side and dam and turbine is connected by using a pipeline. This is a pipeline which is used for connecting dam and turbine house. This pipe a technical name is what a pen stroke. The pen stroke is a pipe which carries the water. If you see an actual diameter of pen stroke, the diameter of pen stroke is 2 meter to 3 meter. So you can imagine that a 3 meter means it's almost 10 feet. So diameter of this particular pipeline will be a 10 feet and water will be carried forward. At the end of this particular pipeline, you will observe that there is one wall for opening and closing of the flow of the water to the turbine. This is wall and this particular part is called as nozzle. You know that the nozzle is a converging area pipe where the pressure energy get converted into kinetic energy. So at the entry of the nozzle, there will be high pressure energy whereas exit of the nozzle will have a kinetic energy or a high velocity jet of water. Then this is particular device is called as a turbine. So you should know what is mean by turbine. Turbine is a device which will give you mechanical energy as a output. So mechanical energy means any solid part which is rotating or reciprocating or oscillating we say it has a mechanical energy. If you see around us the 95% of the time we see rotary mechanical energy. For example the fan is rotating so it will have rotary mechanical energy. The rear wheel of your bicycle it's rotating so it will have rotary energy. So rotary mechanical energy is very useful in many of the application. This turbine will have turbine blade so this is called as a turbine blade or another name is also called as a bucket which is connected to rot uh, rotor this is a rotor white color what you are observing that's rotor so this turbine blade are firmly connected to rotor and at the center of rotor we are having the turbine shaft so we are going to take a mechanical energy output from this particular turbine shaft so this turbine shaft will be rotating and this energy will be useful for generating an electric power. After the shaft, we will be having the electrical generator. The function of electrical generator is to convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. Here we are not shown the electrical generator, but you have to assume that this shaft is connected to electrical generator. Electrical generator will take mechanical energy from this and will give you output as a electrical energy. So in order to avoid a confusion, specifically I have not shown the electrical generator okay there is one more part that's what called as the surge tank the function of surge tank we'll see and later on so we have seen what is dam what is pen stroke what is wall what is nozzle what is turbine now let's go for understanding working of this particular how it will work so assume that the currently this this particular power plant is not working and we have to start generating electricity for starting electricity generation what we have to do is this wall should make it open open means what when we are going to open this wall the flow of the water will start so i'll show you animation related to this one so i have removed the wall from this one means the wall is open now and then 
the flow of the water will start so you can see that the flow of the water has start jet of water is coming outside and it strikes on the bucket of the turbine when it strikes on the bucket of the turbine it will give force here and because of force the bucket starts rotating or blade start rotating blade is connected to rotor so rotor will start rotating as rotor start rotating shaft also start rotating you can observe here here if you check that the water is coming from this dam and finally we are getting here mechanical energy as a output okay so here there are number of conversion of energy so you can see that the conversion here i have shown you chart potential energy will convert into kinetic energy then kinetic energy into mechanical energy mechanical energy into electrical energy so potential energy into kinetic energy it will convert in the pipeline and the nozzle you can see here that before dam we are having a potential energy what is potential energy potential energy is energy because of its position so as i told you dam is at higher height and as it is at higher height it will have a high potential energy this water is flowing the water will come outside so here we are having high velocity jet of water so as it is having a high velocity i can say it has a high kinetic energy this kinetic energy ultimately converted into rotary motion of uh, shaft and that's why i can say that it has a rotary mechanical energy and then this turbine is connected to the generator i have shown you symbolically and after generator we will get finally electrical energy so there are conversions of potential energy into kinetic energy kinetic energy into mechanical energy mechanical energy into electrical energy okay so these are the converting part now after this when we have to stop this particular turbine what we have to do the wall which was present here that we have to make it close so after closing this particular wall what happens let's check when we are going to close it so let's consider that i have put a wall here means now close and the flow of the water has also stopped when we suddenly close this particular wall the water which is rushing through a 10 feet diameter pipe that will give a very high pressure on this particular area inside a pipeline we are having a water and that water will try to rush forward but i have closed this wall and as i have closed this wall the water cannot move forward as water is not moving forward in this area of the pipeline very high pressure is generated because of this very high pressure there is a chances of bursting of this particular pipeline in order to avoid this bursting of pipeline what we have provided is the surge tank what is surge tank surge tank is a simple tank which is connected to penstock when pressure tries to go above the water will get a space and it will enter into what this particular surge tank like this because the water can enter here the high pressure in this particular zone will be reduced and the bursting of the pipeline will be avoided at the same time water hammer effect also can be avoided we can see that by the animation water is filling up and that's why the pressure will be get reduced and as pressure get reduced water hammer can be avoided or bursting of pipeline can also be avoided okay so now we have understood a total working and we have understood that how electrical energy is generated and how surge tank is useful for avoiding water hammer effect now let's go for understanding advantages of this hydrolytic power plant what are the advantages no fuel is required as potential energy is stored in water is used for electrical generation so here if you compare this particular hydrolytic power plant with other power plant like uh, thermal power plant nuclear power plant where we required a fuel but here fuel is not required because we are using water only the neat and clean source of energy so in this particular power plant we are not going to generate any kind of pollution so that's why it's neat and clean very small running charges as water is available free of cost the running charge of this as i told you fuel is not required and that's why very less charges comparatively less maintenance is required so maintenance required for this is less serves other purpose too such as irrigation means the water which we have used for generation of electricity that water can be used for farming purpose or irrigation purpose reliability of hydrolytic power plant is a high means its uh, ability to produce an electricity will remain same after uh, many year of working this particular power plant can work for 25 year 50 year or sometime 100 years also so that point is written here that very long life and less manpower is required the number of person or worker required in this case is very very less these are all advantages of hydrolytic power plant let us see what are the disadvantages of this hydrolytic power plant very high capital cost as i told you the size of this is very big the cost of land is more and that's why 
the capital cost of this particular demo there are two type of cost that is capital cost and running cost the capital cost is initial cost which we have to which we have to invest running cost is when the plant is running at that time what are the charges come that is running cost in the hydrolytic power plant the running cost is very less but capital cost is very high high cost of transformation transmission as a hydro plants are located in a hilly area which are quite away from the consumer so consumers are available in the city whereas this particular power plant is available in hilly area so distance from and consumer to hilly area is long and that's why transmission charges will be more total power developed depends on water availability this means it is dependent on rainfall so this total is depend on rainfall if in the summer the water is not available we cannot run this particular power plant suitable site is required for plant so we cannot establish such kind of power plant anywhere so we required particular kind of site where water availability and other parameters required for this particular plant is available then and then only we can go for such kind of plant so these all are disadvantages of a hydroelectric power plant another point is a site selection for hydroelectric power plant if you have to establish a hydroelectric power plant how you decide that where it can be installed first point is availability of water that's quite important so when we are establishing there must be availability of water next is geological structure geological structure means what the structure the dam which we are going to locate it should be at higher height than that of the turbine house if the height is more and more we'll get more energy output from that particular turbine so geological structure is important next type of land the land which we are using that should be strong enough to sustain with the load which we are keeping on the land so if land is loose then we cannot establish such kind of hydrolytic power plant transportation facility as i told you that hydrolytic power plant will be established in the hilly region whereas the whereas the consumers are available in the city so we have to we required a transportation facility at the same time the transportation facility is required for worker also so as workers will be living in the city and it is a uh, plant is available at hilly season so there should be good road facility to move the worker from city to plant and plant to city so that's what the power plant selection criteria so if these all parameters are available then we can go for establishing a hydrolytic power plant this is what the site selection so we have seen construction of hydrolytic power plant then we have seen working of hydrolytic power plant advantages disadvantages and finally we have seen site selection parameter so this is all about hydrolytic power plant we request you subscribe our channel and go through the more videos thank you very much for listening